welcome to my channel. I live out of my 1998 Jeep Cherokee at the moment. I'm in an apartment right now for an Airbnb because every weekend I need to edit videos and then upload them so I use the internet. It's really nice to stretch out, like let me tell you. We have a long, long journey today. The longest probably section of driving I've done in a long time. I have to drive seven to eight hours in one go today. I don't have to. The reason that I'm doing this is because I'm going to the smallest town in America with the full population of one. The reason I'm booking it is because the only establishment there is only open today. If I don't get there before it closes, I won't be able to explore the town. The lady, as the sole occupant of this town, got her liquor license and opened a tavern. And I thought it would be cool to visit the tavern. And I am seven to eight hours away. I'm still in Wyoming. I had to drive through basically all of Nebraska, which is the longest state to drive through when you're driving west or east. If you've driven the route, you know Nebraska is not fun to drive through. Not only is this town that I'm going to the smallest town, there's a town like 30 minutes away that is a runner up for smallest town in America. In my experience, Nebraska is very barren and there's not a lot of people that live there because there's not a lot going on. I could be wrong if you're Nebraskan. <laughs> Let me know like what the cool things are to do in Nebraska but I'm not really that interested. It's one of those drive through states for me personally. This gives me the opportunity to explore a little bit more and to see what it's all about. We're gonna to go to Northern Nebraska, which I've never been to. Usually I like to stop at a coffee shop and have a little coffee and play my route and all that. And I also wanted to go to the gym because eight hours is a long time to drive just sitting. I hate sitting. Comment below if you are like me and you cannot sit for like longer than an hour without wanting to jump out of your body. I don't know what it is. It's just like, I have never liked sitting. Maybe it's because I homeschooled myself and I didn't have to endure the long sitting in the classroom for long periods of time without having to, without being able to get up. I don't know, but I just like to move around. So driving for me eight hours is like 15 hours for the normal person. We're not gonna go to a coffee shop and we're not gonna go to the, we don't, we don't have time to go to the gym. I need to get an early start. So I did a mobility workout a little bit ago and I'm just gonna have my coffee here in this Airbnb, put in my collagen. Let's get this journey started. I'm gonna get all around and get on the road. I've been doing this thing where I make my own trail mix. Whenever you go to like natural food stores and stuff, they have like all these bins of different types of things. And if you can find a really good one, you can get little bags for like 40 cents each and you can just kind of customize your own trail mix and it turns out to be a lot cheaper than buying like a bag and it's healthier. Today's trail mix flavor is raw almonds, raisins, and I crushed up some peanut butter pretzels to put in it. So that's our trail mix for this trip. Also, I'm pretty obsessed with um, mango, but also mango with like chili, like spices or whatever. I got some chocolate, which is very expensive, but I loved the ingredients. But now we just drive and drive and drive. I'm now in Nebraska. I've been driving for like two hours and I'm exhausted from driving already. Hard with Yuki because number one, she doesn't have any air conditioning. Well, she does, but I don't use it. And I have the windows down, so it's really loud and expensive especially in Nebraska, it's super windy. She's also not that easy to drive. If you've ever driven uh, an older Jeep like this, you know, you have to really focus on controlling it. I'm on a mission. It smells like farm, like cow poo around here. Windy, not much to report. There has never been a time that I've gone through Nebraska and it has not been windy. Guys, are you okay out here? Does it ever not be windy out here? My skirt is completely flying upwards. I can't do drone shots here, but I'm gonna just show you the area so you can get a sense of what Nebraska looks like if you are keen. Drive this all in one go. 
I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I don't want to drive anymore. But I do take back what I said about Nebraska being, you know, kind of boring, whatever. As you go more north, it gets very beautiful, very green. A lot of times I think that I'm just driving in Pennsylvania. It looks very similar. Uh, tons of farm farmland. You know, it's it's not bad. You can definitely find the beauty in it, and I'm sure you can find lots of solitude places here as well. But I still have hours left to drive. I've been driving for my whole life forever. Years at this point. We are 15 minutes away, and I'm never driving this much ever again. The same scenery that plays over and over and over again. small town. So Rudy's library is apparently a library she made in honor of her late husband, which is very cool. Her name is Elsie, by the way, the one resident that lives in Manawi. So we're going to go and see if we can get into this tavern. I really have to pee. I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, that was so awkward. I walked in. There's a lot of people in there, and they all stopped talking and stared at me. And then I realized they don't accept debit or credit cards, so I had to get some cash. This is so awkward. It was one of those moments where they just stopped, and there's like, I don't know, 20 people in there, and they just all stopped talking at once. We drove this far, we're doing this. I'm gonna go get a beer. <laughs> really really awkward and really out of my comfort zone but I did it. I gotta find a camp spot now before it gets too dark. Didn't get to go in the library but at least we got to go in the tavern and I did learn some things. Made it to my camp spot before it got dark. I looked this all up beforehand so I just found a pull off. So I want to talk about kind of why my channel is the way that it is. And by that, I mean, I don't do things the same as I, I feel like other um, travel YouTubers and things like that. Whenever I go places, people used to say a lot, talk to the locals and, and, and this and that. You know, I realized when I went into this tavern, it was a very local type of place, you know what I mean? It was very like, you have to talk to the people there. Otherwise, like, you know, <laughs> it's just so awkward. But the problem is, is that a lot of these places that I'm very interested in and that I just, I want to learn more about and I'm really keen to go to, sometimes the locals or the, the older people there will look at me and I know that they're judging me. And because I have a lot of tattoos and they're showing, next time I definitely cover up my tattoos. I don't think Elsie really <laughs> likes me. That's just me thinking that, but I don't think she did. <laughs> I, I think she's really cool and stuff. I didn't really talk to her much. I just asked her, you know, is it okay if I film? There's this type of vibe that older people kind of get around me sometimes. And it makes me a little bit sad because if they knew who I was, I don't think that they would feel that way. I grew up, you know, in farm country, conservative, conservative, con conservative country. And you know, a lot of my values are conservative, I guess. I don't, I'm not one way or the other, but you know, I'm, I'm not some sort of hooligan like they think that I might be and I understand why they would judge me. So those types of places and situations are more difficult for me, which is why I'm a bit more introverted when I travel, why it's a little bit harder for me. Now, when I went in there, they were they were friendly enough. Like she she ID'd me, which I usually don't really get. I haven't been ID'd for a very long time, which I was a bit flattered. And she had to get her glasses out and just, just like looked at my ID for a really long time. If it was her family or just the people around in, in surrounding towns help her, but they, they were all local there. Yeah, so she looked at my ID for a really long time and it just made me feel a little bit like I was suspicious or something. <laughs> but you know, you know how you feel. Around here is just farmers and I'm very familiar with farmers, but it doesn't really matter how friendly I am. They're gonna have their views on me and I don't know what those are and I'm not trying to assume. So 
So having said all of that, that's just something that a lot of people don't really consider with these types of things where I have a little bit more to prove, I feel, when it comes to social situations with more conservative, conservative older people anyways. But having said that, some of the people in there were so, so friendly and so nice and so welcoming. This guy let me sit beside him and he was just, you know, a farmer, didn't travel or anything like that. He was retired and he offered me some tater tots. And I like that, that that made me feel good, like welcome. Some of the other people there didn't make me feel as welcome, but not to their fault. In order for someone to like you or to want to talk to you, you have to initiate. I feel so dead from today. I have this thing where sometimes if I don't talk or I'm really, really tired, my voice goes inside myself and it's, I can't project. I had selective mutism as a child when I was in school and I couldn't project my voice loud enough for people to hear. So I was having that there. So I could only talk to this, this man and it was, it was overwhelming. I stayed there as long as I could and um, I learned some things about Elsie. She was talking to the people, you know, it was just very interesting. And so going to a place like that is very out of my comfort zone. I can do things that other people would be like, wow, you're brave, but doing something like that is hard for me. And the epiphany that I had is like, I need to do more of this type of stuff, not because for other people or entertainment or anything like that, for myself, because the things that I do that challenge me, change me in a good way. Just like I was so opposed to walking, I walk more now, it's changed me. I have been very opposed to socialization for a lot of different reasons in my life. It's always been so hard for me and I've pushed and put myself out there throughout my whole life. It's okay to push a little bit more and to do things like that. I did my best and I hope I did Monawi justice. I'm saying it wrong. I heard the lady say it in there, but I, I'm saying it wrong. I could have done better. I could have been a better YouTuber, but I did the best I could with how, the state that I'm in right now. I desperately, desperately need to see. Good morning. Every state has its beauty. You can find beauty in any state. I want to encourage you in your state or wherever you're at, there is beauty to be found. I think the rest of this video is me trying to get through these Midwest states. Gotta keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. In honor of Nebraska, let me just give you some state facts. Nebraska has the largest man-planted forest, which is the Nebraska National Forest. Nebraska is the only state in the United States that has a single legislative chamber, whatever that means. It has the most miles of rivers of any state. It has so many isolated small towns, like the one that we just visited. And that's probably why the smallest town in the U.S. is in Nebraska. It makes sense. The cattle outnumber the people here. Supposedly red beer is a thing here. You have tomato juice in beer. I do have to move on though to Iowa. Look at the amount of bugs Yuki has murdered. It gets worse the more east you go, the more bugs. I really haven't had to give her that much oil. We're in Iowa now, by the way. We got out of the never-ending state of Nebraska. That state never ends, I swear. It never ends. Now we're in Iowa, but not complaining onwards. I just had a major tragedy occur here in Iowa. My shocks for my back, it just broke. It just randomly broke. Sorry, Yuki, we'll get you fixed. She's, she's, you know, She's, she's doing really, really well, and I'm surprised she's made it this far. It is very important for me to get to do mobility exercises and to go to the gym while I'm driving like this. Hopefully we can get into the next state today. Supposedly there's a tornado in these parts. Just my luck of driving through a tornado. I'm just gonna keep driving and see what happens. focusing on the humid. We're in Illinois now, nine and a half hours left. Yuki's been driving great even through the tornadoes. I'm gonna sleep in this rest stop. Highway life, huh? <laughs> I'm 
My nails need desperate attention. I am in Fort Wayne, Indiana right now. I actually used to live here. Um, I've lived a lot of different places in Indiana. Whenever I was a teenager, I moved out and I was a nanny for three weeks, then I got fired and um, I moved to Indiana. <laughs> Random. And here we are. Here we are not, because we are leaving it's the last stretch. I am going to end this video here. I know I've done just a lot of talking and I've been in my car. But that is the reality of this week. I need a new tripod desperately. Stay tuned for the next adventure or whatever that may be. Stay extraterrestrial and I'll see you in the next video.